everybody to the first order of business of the uh, Virginia Beach City Council in our new home here. In accordance with the Virginia Beach City Code 2.2-21, uh, uh, an authority invested in me as mayor of the city of Virginia Beach. I hereby call for a special informal session of the Virginia Beach City Council, Tuesday, August 2nd, 2022, 2 p.m., City Council Chamber, Building 1, City Hall, Second Floor, 2401 Courthouse Drive. The purpose of this special formal session is to conduct the public interviews for the short list of candidates to fill the vacant Bayside District City Council seat. Prior to the start of the special session, City Council will hold and has held a ribbon cutting for the City Council Chamber at 1 p.m. Sincerely signed, Bobby Dyer. Okay, uh, we're calling this meeting to order. And, uh, you know, Madam Clerk, do we have the roll call? All present. Okay. Um, at this point, uh, you know, we're here for a sad reason. You, losing Lewis Jones was a tremendous loss, not only to this council, but to this community. And, uh, you know, we are looking forward to uh, picking somebody that will continue his legacy of excellence. And uh, we have some very remarkable candidates that we're going to bring forward. Each candidate will have 10 minutes to speak, at which time the council then can engage in, you know, questions after. Okay, our first uh, you know candidate, Delcino Miles. Please come forward. Welcome. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Mayor, Madam Vice Mayor, and members of City Council. I come before you, Mayor. You stole my thunder with mixed emotions, mixed because of the circumstances that brought us to this moment. Um, there's been a death in our Virginia Beach family, and we certainly mourn the passing of Councilman Lewis Jones. He was a phenomenal public servant and champion for our wonderful city. He will be sorely missed. I'm humbled and grateful to be selected as a finalist to serve as a BASAT representative on the council, albeit for just a short time. It's a privilege to be among the first speakers that come before you in this amazing city hall. I won't spend too much time going over my resume. You have that in my application packet. However, I will share a few points about some issues that members of council have noted. Additionally, it's National Night Out, and I'm sure you have some things to, that you got going on this evening. I'd like to highlight the fact that I'm a, my Bayside roots run deep. I was born and delivered, believe it or not, by a midwife in a rented house on Newtown Road near Williams Farm. I attended Thurgood Elementary, Independence Junior High, and Cox High School, so I hope you FC and Kim School grads don't hold that against me. I learned to be a team player and collaborator by participating in student government and playing sports, field hockey, basketball, track and field, and softball. I was usually the captain or co-captain of the team, so I understand leadership and discipline work ethic. I also understand that the captain and co-captains of this team is the mayor and vice mayor. I grew up in Gracetown, a then predominantly African-American community next to Thurgood. I attended New St. John AME Church in Newsom Farm where I spent my formative years before attending Stanford University. I've since earned my master's at Regent University. All this equipped me for servant leadership. My community involvement is diverse and inclusive among many organizations, business, faith-based, environmental, military, government, educational, conservative, liberal, minority, non-minority, and across multiple business uh, industries, travel and tourism, transportation, gaming, historic preservation, architecture, engineering, housing, and so much more. And you may be wondering, when does she sleep? Sleep is overrated. Additionally, I know and I have collaborated with many of the talented city staff who are a tremendous asset to the city council and its work. The city manager and his deputies, the planning, economic development, public works, and so many others, including housing. I also have established relationships with many of our leaders across the region at the local, state, and federal levels, Whatever role the city council needs me to play on the team, I'm up for it. Now I'll touch on a few issues that I believe are of interest to the council and the public. My business currently has three open contracts as a subconsultant to provide community engagement services. That's Sea Level Wise, Eastern Shore Drive Drainage Improvements, and Special Services District SSD uh, Dredging Project. 
I have no contracts directly with the city. The vast majority of my contracts are outside of the city. However, if appointed to city council, I will readily resign each Virginia Beach subcontract in writing. I've already advised my prime contractors that I am a finalist for the appointment. However, I will not leave the, con the city or the contractors without the services that I have promised. I have already um, identified a capable firm that's based in Virginia Beach and is SWAM certified, ready to step in. Speaking of SWAM, the city council adopted the recommendations of a disparity study, and the numbers are moving in the right direction with 10.1% of contracts awarded to minority-owned firms in FY21. The goal had been 10% for several years before the disparity study. I applaud your support of those efforts to move the needle. Using various tools to encourage SWAM firms to do business with the city is definitely paying off. Such tools as the project goals for MBEs and subcontractors for construction over $5 million, as well as sheltered bidding initiative for all SWAM firms, construction contracts up to half a million, goods and services contract between 10,000 and 100,000. Rudy Loop, proposals in response to the RFI were due last week. Along with members of council and staff, I will carefully review and evaluate the proposals to determine which ones more closely aligns with the priorities and vision of this council and the comprehensive plan and the Virginia Beach Resort Area Strategic Action Plan 2030 adopted by city council on June 2nd, 2020. Some factors for consideration would be plans for parking, open space, our surfers, our anglers, those who like to fish, and community stakeholders, uh, feedback to name a few. I will certainly respect the leadership and efforts of those council members who have led the charge for, Loop, for Rudy Loop. Stormwater and flood protection. Voters overwhelmingly supported the referendum last year. However, it is vitally important to ensure that a viable implementation plan is in place. The Process Improvement Committee is reviewing this matter and allowing them to complete their work and reconcile input from the subcommittee led by Mr. Moss and Mr. Jones seems like a reasonable approach. Transportation. Having a reliable and cost-effective transportation system requires a multimodal approach, much like the resort area mobility plan or ramp. It's important to keep an open mind about which modes would work best as we plan the Virginia Beach of the future that increasingly attracts visitors and retains our brain trust. Transportation is just as important to growth and economic development as our schools and housing stock. Budget surpluses. Having a surplus shows that the city is managed efficiently it's not always necessary to spend a surplus building a rainy day fund when times aren't as prosperous as we saw during the height of the uh, pandemic, just as important. The city council has generously invested in recruiting and retaining talent for city staff positions. The last time I heard a presentation for the city manager back in June, he had over 800 positions to fill. The police academy graduated 25 officers recently, but we, we are, still have 70 officers short. Looking at competitive compensation to recruit is a step certainly in the right direction. The city council was very gracious in approving investment in technology to help our police force to be as effective and as efficient as possible. Also regarding any surplus, if one is looking at recurring expenses, then we must determine how to sustain it. Infrastructure maintenance and salaries come to mind. Additionally, in collaboration with members of the city council and the city manager and his budget team, I'd continue to review the adopted budget for FY23 that included funding that targets each of the city's five strategies, the 21st century infrastructure, safe and healthy communities, growing economic opportunity, thriving neighborhoods, and innovative and sustainable government. Redistricting. The Court of Appeals has ruled, and I will comply with the existing court ruling, but seek advice of the city attorney and members of council going forward. Legacy Bayside District Priorities. I want to keep the momentum going on Burden Station. Councilman Jones was a tremendous help in working with Burden Station residents and connecting them with city water and other infrastructure improvements. I'd like to inquire of city staff about progress on the Burden Station area plan that was adopted January 17th and 27th in 2009 and updated November 20th, 2018. Bayside is heavily developed with residential, but affordable housing is still a challenge for many families. That's certainly not unique to Bayside and is a city and region-wide <laughs> issue. I'd seek guidance from city staff on strategies to provide quality yet affordable housing for working families and our seniors. Also, Northampton Boulevard has had some recent traffic fatalities. I'd look to the city's traffic engineers to help with safety concerns and strategies to alleviate the heavy congestion near I-64. These are just a few of the topics I wanted to touch on but we'll entertain your questions to further discuss these or any other matters that the council wishes to address. You all are the cool kids, 
So I would love to be able to sit with the cool kids. Again, thank you for allowing me to get this far in the process. Thank you for your service to the city and the region, and God bless. Okay, thank you. Any questions? John. A few questions. One is, you know, rezoning to 836 has been a huge issue in the Bayside Borough and would be also in District 9 on Shore Drive. We had an unprecedented approval of 836 on Pleasure House Road, but there's other vacant properties. Well, what is your thoughts on the appropriateness of that high density zoning in the Shore Drive corridor that has been, be fair, universally opposed by every single Civic League along that corridor? Well, certainly, I, that's what I do for a living, Mr. Moss. Thank you for the question, is community engagement and, and making sure that we have everybody who has an interest in being at the table, that has a voice. That's what I do. So if community engagement, I'd pretty much be led by what the people want, what the citizens want, what the stakeholders want. And certainly, um, I'd certainly want to have more information and make sure that we do. Um, we've had all our traffic studies and all the other analysis to make sure that we, I make an informed decision. But certainly, having heavy and robust community engagement is critical. Well, we had that. We still got 836 that they didn't want, but thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, the other question we'll, uh, that I asked about was changing the manner in which appointments or uh, vacancies are uh, filled. Currently, we have filled them by the appointment process. We're going to a new electoral system. Would you support adopting the same practice we have in the General Assembly and the House of Representatives that when a vacancy occurs on this body that the public in a special election decide who the representative is over us, the council member choosing who fills vacancies? I never have an issue with getting the public involved on decision making, but this well, would require a charter change. And I think that with the relationships we have with our, our state delegates, I think we have to find out would it pass and who would carry it for us. But the question I'm asking is, would you support making that request to the General Assembly subject to approval by the voters? I would not have a problem with that. All right, thank you very much. The other issue, other question that has came aboard is, as you know, the state is eliminating the sales tax on food on the 1st of January. That's a one cent tax. There's also a one and a half cent local tax. And all of us know that the tax on food is very regressive and punishes the least among us the most. But would you support a request to the General Assembly to give localities across the state the option of eliminating the local one and a half cent sales tax on food? Given that we have the Dillon rule, yes, I would, would not have a problem asking. Thanks. Thank you very much. I appreciate your coming down and volunteering to offer yourself for public service. I do appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you for your questions. Okay. Anyone else at this point? Barbara? Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate that. I made a note as you were talking, Mrs. Miles, about um, your leadership ability. Um, would you like to elaborate on that and how you believe that can contribute to this body and maybe some of your positions as a leader? Sure. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for the question, uh, Ms. Wooten. Um, I've been in leadership almost since birth because I was the firstborn. Um, of, of seven siblings. So uh, it's sort of ingrained in me, but working uh, through, uh, in, even in high school, I was in student government, served there. I've been a past chair of the Chamber of Commerce. I presently am president of Virginia Beach Vision. Um, I've, um, I've, I'm serving, and thank you all for appointing me to several boards, uh, such as the TCC. Tidewater Community College. I'm on that board and uh, representing the city. I'm also on their Educational Foundation Board, which I now chair, uh, to assist them in um, uh, identifying resources to fund their, their programs and their scholarships for the students. And also, uh, uh, you all appointed me to the, um, the Regional uh, Transportation Advisory Group out of the, the TPO. So looking forward to just contributing there. So I've had many opportunities to serve. Uh, Virginia Aquarium, I'm past president of that board as well. And uh, during my tenure there, uh, we were able to uh, have a successful capital campaign, which certainly is an investment to the, uh, a tremendous asset here in Virginia Beach. So our goal at the time was $10 million, all private dollars. But we went north of that, well over $13 million, to assist uh, uh, the aquarium in really becoming world class and some, another attraction to extend the tourism season. So, and I also am uh, chair of the board 
uh, thanks to uh, the late uh, Jim Ricketts, who asked me to serve on the Virginia Beach Travel and Tourism Foundation, which I chair. And I bring that experience and that passion for the city uh, here, and I uh, present that to you today for consideration. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Houghton. Okay, Barbara. Right. Well, we all know this is a very short time appointment. Yes, ma'am. Only four months or so. Yes, ma'am. And uh, so that's not a lot of time. But you have been involved in many things throughout the years. Uh, is there any particular initiative that you think, well, now that you would have this spot that you would like to bring forward? Um, at, as I mentioned in my remarks, and thank you for the question, uh, Ms. Henley, is to continue some of the things that uh, Councilman Jones was so passionate about. He really had a, a heart to serve the folks at Burton Station. I really want to keep that momentum going. Don't want to miss anything there because he, he'd worked so hard for so many years to get them city services. And I really want to see that come to fruition along with that corridor. So that's a be among, but certainly I defer to the priorities of this body and to be as supportive as I can to move your initiatives forward. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Okay, anyone else? And uh, please, if we can raise our hand a little higher, it would be a little logistical help. I would appreciate <laughs> it. Okay, higher end, there we go. <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting out here then. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Miles, for your willingness to step up and serve our community. Um, particularly one, I just want to be clear, um, is this an area that you grew up with and grew up in? And just, uh, I think you made that clear, but um, I just certainly want to uh, give you an opportunity to reiterate that you are um, familiar with this area. Um, in, in which you are trying to serve. Thank you, Mr. Rouse. It's kind of, it's, it's, I've come full circle because where I live now in Cypress Point, I'm literally within a mile or two of where I was born on Newtown Road. Um, so I was born in that rented house on Newtown and I live in Cypress Point, which is within an, a, a mile from that. So I just feel that there's a great distance in terms of living between that place and where I live now, um, but it's a short distance in terms of uh, geography. So yes, I not only was born there, uh, uh, reared there, uh, but also I, I still live there. And so much of my family is there as well. And so, I, and through what I do professionally, uh, I've gotten to know the stakeholders there. Um, and as you know, uh, the Bayside area has diverse uh, stakeholders, whether it's residential, high-end, uh, to rentals, uh, to a variety of businesses along Shore Drive. Um, and in Aragona, one of the older neighborhoods in the area. So I'm very familiar with a lot of the communities, just from, not just personally, but from the work I've done on behalf of the city as a communications professional and community engagement professional. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, anyone else? Okay, I do not see a hand. Okay, Delcino, thank you so much. Thank really you. really appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, next up, Ronald Ripley. Welcome, Ron. Thank you very, <clears throat> thank you very much. <clears throat> I want to talk with you today more about my service uh, to the city and not about my business background and so on and so forth. Uh, could, could get off on that if I wanted to, but um, Mr. Mayor, Madam Vice Mayor, members of City Council, the unexpected loss of, of Lewis shook the city and it shook me. Uh, he was a huge part of the fabric of the city of Virginia Beach for over three decades. He's truly missed. Um, yeah, I wish he was here today, quite frankly. He would, en he would enjoy this beautiful building that, that we're in. Uh, it would have been a big day. Thank you for, for considering me for this position. It's an honor to be considered to fill his unexpired term. He was truly a great man. It's also a privilege to be considered among the other two fine contestants. Um, after serving 20 years of public service on the Planning Commission, I had no idea of re-entering uh, the, the public service arena. So why do I seek this? Why do I seek this position? It's a three-part answer. First, to honor Lewis Jones and my friendship with him. I knew and supported Lewis his entire 35 years uh, on council. Lewis could 
trust me and I could trust Lewis. He was, he was a politically astute. He understood Virginia Beach politics better than anyone. I resided in the Bayside area for over 35 years, and I was through his appointment that I first served on the Virginia Beach P Planning Commission, which was back, which was the first eight-year term, and I started in 1999. The second reason is I've developed a genuine interest for public service and serving the citizens by my term of public service. And interest was developed over the two decades of service on the commission and other boards that I served on. As a resident of 48 years of the city, I've always viewed our city as a wonderful place to, to live, work, and do business with, do business in, and to play. It's also a beautiful city, yet it's a very complex city. I found it to be exciting to participate, helping shape many interesting and often complex issues. I particularly enjoyed participating in shaping some of the big issues that we, that we live by today in the city, and I'll explain that a little further. My interest in serving the public was further developed by participating in four comprehensive plans. When I was when I went on the Planning Commission, the first after the second year, I was made chairman, and that was the first plan. And in that first plan, I really delved into the city. I really started to really see every aspect of it. Then I served on two, then I, I was immersed in two more plans, and then a fourth plan. So I'd like to mention some of the planning studies that I was actively participate in and help shape that you deal with each and every day. I will add certainly that the assistance of staff the, the uh, collaboration of other planning commissioners and committee members was very much a part of what I was able to do and in, in some cases in leadership, in leadership roles. I served eight years on the Shore Drive Advisory Committee, which is now the Bayfront Advisory Committee. When I first went on, the ULI, ULI study had just been finished. The committee along with the city, the, the, the committee along with the city developed transportation plans, infrastructure plans, design guidelines, which basically I wrote most of those guidelines. This board had staff but no money. So it was important to demonstrate the enormous economic benefits that this area was generating in order that it, it its, get its fair due. Bayside, the Bayfront area covers two political districts. It covers both Bayside and also Lynn Haven. It's, it's it's drawn up there. So we captured the data in there, and it was astounding. We came before council, and council saw the benefit and funded the first phase of that plan. I'm proud to say that <clears throat> they did fund it, and you have landscaping now down on part of that uh, road. And, you know, whose side got it? It was Lewis's side, you know, of course. But the, the rest of the corridor desperately needs funding. And if, and if I am appointed, I'm going to do what I can do to look under the rocks and find funding to get the rest of that right away funded because it really sorely needs it. I was also one of two citizens who served on the engineering, it was an engineering, uh, about four or five engineering members of the city and Cal Casier and myself, we served on a committee that selected the design of the new um, Lesnar Bridge. That was an amazing feat, and you know, Figgy International came in and did, built that, build, built that uh, bridge, and it just, it, I'm real proud of that. It was, I was in a unique position to take a deep, a deep dive into a number of major planning studies that helped shape the community. Now, big policy is something like the Green Line, I wasn't involved with that but in, in establishing that, but that is a big policy. That's a policy. We don't go beyond the green line unless we really, we just don't do it. The rule is real important. The, a big policy that I was involved in is that as chairman got a call to meet, we had a meeting set up with Oceana, and Oceana brought the Department of Defense people in, and in that meeting, before council saw it, they showed us where all of our regulations, all of our compliances, all of our conditions had to be changed to comply with them. If they didn't, so in so many words or less, they were leaving town. And that was quite a quite a time to to 
to be involved in the city and working through a lot of details. Another big policy was the second uh, SGA plan, I mean, the second comprehensive plan, our, the planning staff laid out a, a map. Bob Scott was there. He laid it out. We started marking on it. That became the strategic growth areas, areas that are appropriate to develop other than in the residential district. So that was a very another big policy that you deal with every, each and every day. I co-authored the national the Neighborhood Housing Revitalization Plan and the, and the Workforce Housing Ordinance with, An, with Andy Friedman. Took a couple of years, you approved it, and now it's part of what you deal with today. I was the lead commission also on, on helping to establish and draw the and develop the resort area form based zoning. Third reason that I believe that I'm I'm, I have developed a, the third reason I think that I'm qualified here is that I've developed the experience to hit the ground running and I shouldn't, and it should shorten any learning curve, if you will. I feel that I spent a lifetime in public hearings here and also at uh, ODU at, in the Board of Visitors. Um, I feel that um, when I count up, I say maybe 240, 250 public hearings I've been in, probably dealt with 4,000, 5,000 zoning applications, uh, maybe four or 500 meetings associated with planning. I mean, just a lot of information, a lot of historical knowledge that, that I think I could help with this position. I certainly understand the rules of order. Lewis taught me something very important about decorum. He says, if you don't have anything to say, keep quiet during a meeting because I see some people laughing. They've said, and he probably told them the same thing he, because all you're going to do is prolong the meeting. He said, however, there is an exception. If you're running for office, then you throw that, throw that rule out the door. So anyway, uh, gained a lot of experience on the city council. The number of city council members here I've been with for a long time. Uh, three mayors, three city managers, four planning directors, several city attorneys, multiple department heads, and a slew of planning commissioners. I know Bayside. I've represented it before for eight years. And with the background and most all city planning issues, I would like to add one more thing that drives me. When I was asked to go back to the planning commission, remember I served planning for eight years, went off for about a year onto the wetlands board, and I was asked to go back onto the planning commission. I, I had to think about that, and I said, why would I do that? And it's the same reason I would do it here, and that is hopefully I can make a difference. I knew if I went back, I wasn't just going to go back and just business as usual. We can do better. We can do better applications. We can do better for the citizens. So that was my thinking, and that's what drives me as well. 30 seconds left. Okay. Well, my motivations, again, are personally want to uh, honor Lewis Jones and his represent his legacy in this district. I feel that the public service is valuable, and I've developed a somewhat passion for it. I have the experience, and I think I can make a difference. Thank you. Okay, any questions? Mr. Moss. Well, I think I can read into your response answers to some of the questions, so I won't ask those since I think I understand your position. But I would like to come back to two of the questions I asked earlier, because you're right, Lewis Jones was my next door neighbor, down the street neighbor for 20 years. So he was in my Lewis, neighbor too. Yeah, Lewis, very, Salt very Park. great guy. And, uh, but I do know he was a strong advocate of preventing the, and voted against it densification of that shore drive area. So that question remains is about, the, and I did pose it in advance, so it shouldn't be a surprise, mm -hmm. is what is your position on rezoning additional properties to A36 on the shore drive corridor? Well, most of the zoning on shore drive, and I think your question was east of the bridge. West of the Lesnar Bridge, the part that's on the uh, Bay Lake Pines, that area can think of the McCluskey rezoning that was redrawn. That would be viewed a good example of something that was being proposed for A36, but was opposed by the community. I thought your letter said east of it, but uh, I, I would. I think it really depends on the application. Zone density is not always a problem. A lot of times you get to A36 because, and, and again, you're talking about the number of units. I understand, Correct. and I'm not. I'm not skirting it, but 
you know, oftentimes A36 is used because it has a better parking ratio. You can get you know better lot less lot coverage and get your parking ratios to work. But as far as density is concerned, I would be. Um, it depends on the application. I mean, it, the quality of the application, the the amount of density that's actually being proffered. Um, you know, all those things would come into play. And the other key question, I'm not going to ask all, but this is an important one. Do you support preserving Rudy Loop 100% as recreational space and free of commercial development? I think uh, subject to receiving the plans, I would, yes. And I think that, uh, I think you got to provide for parking in there. And I think it may be appropriate for associated, any kind of associated commercial that would tie into a park could possibly be appropriate. But that would be a very de minimis amount. Well, I appreciate your remarks about the Shore Drive continuing to approve that. And I think you'll find it, if you are the one selected, easy to find plenty of money and you won't have to lift many rocks. Uh, but do you have any other uh, priorities for the Bayside District relative to the ending fund balance that we will have this year, probably between city and schools, somewhere between 80 and $100 million? Do you have any ideas of capital improvement priorities that you would bring to our attention? Well, I think we, we first of all, I think there are a lot of C, CIP projects that seem to be sit on these lists forever. If they're not, a, they're not a priority, they ought to probably be moved off. But I think I would look at that for sure. But I think I think um, an initiative to to deal to look at how we improve uh, affordable housing is is a is an issue we ought to look at. I think you have the, now. I'm thinking of the whole Bay, the Bayside district is now includes a lot of uh, Lake, uh, Lake Edwards, et cetera. And I think a community based program there. I think we have the basis of it in the in the ordinances to do it. I think it, that would be a good program. One of the things we have seen with the current state administration, governor and general assembly is returning over performing revenues and surpluses, sharing a great portion of that back as tax relief. Would you be in favor of returning some of our ending fund balance from the year that just ended 30 June, returning some of that budgetary surplus to the citizens in the form of tax relief? I think it would benefit them given the uh, the way inflation is running today, uh, and if you do had the surplus that the city manager and us the council determined it was not needed elsewhere in a more priority basis, I think yeah, I think it would have a. I would look. At, I would definitely be in favor of something like that. And my my last two questions deals with the one you heard previously. You know, when you're out in the audience, was with regards to. Uh, proposing to the General Assembly subject of approval by the voters at a later referendum of changing the manner in which we fill vacancies from council appointments to uh, special elections, much as we do for Congress and the House of Delegates. Would, would that be something that you'd give consideration and could support? I think you could look at it. I think, I think what the way the charter's written today, it seems to have served as well. Uh, but I think it, if you, with some study, it might make some sense. It wouldn't make any sense in this particular situation. Uh, if I was asked to go out and do a campaign and the same one, and I were to do the same thing and then not and get elected and not qualify to be reelected, that wouldn't make a lot of sense. So I think the term, how much time is left in the, in the remaining term would be important. I don't, I don't know how you put that into the ordinance, but, just so you know, in Congress, they have those even when people don't serve, but for a very short time, and also for the House of Delegates. But it sounds like you are open to and giving the voters a chance to choose if that's what they would like. I'll be open to see to consider it. Yes. I, I could follow up. Do you believe that the voters are the sovereign holder of the power and ultimately should decide how we fill vacancies? Do I feel that? Yes, I sure. And the last question is, would you support, this would be something we'd be doing in our legislative package while you would serve if you were the appointee, asking the General Assembly to amend the state statute that would give all localities the option to eliminate the 1.5 cent 
local sales tax on food. I, I think having that option would be good, yeah. Right, Unless... Thank you very much. I appreciate you coming down. I know this is never easy. Thank you for volunteering to be considered, and I appreciate your remarks. You're welcome. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody else? Sabrina. Good afternoon, Mr. Ripley, and thank you for availing yourself to this process. I know it's not a very easy process, but um, given the circumstances, there's a short period of time to serve. And then added to that, you have to be ready to, uh, if you will, come to this position ready to um, be able to work and, and jump right into the circumstances. Can you just kind of elaborate on how your background and planning and other areas will uh, help you facilitate uh, in coming to the, the body and starting uh, from day one? Thank you very much. Uh, the, the um, you know, by, again, all the public hearings I've been in, the you know, Robert's Rules of Order and the, and the way the, the meetings flow and the importance of them moving along like they are, I mean, I've got a, just a ton of experience in that. Um, gained a lot of experience when I was early on the planning commission, became the chairman. Uh, that was a real experience. Uh, sitting in that seat is not as easy as people think it is. Uh, but I, wouldn't, I, I would think I'd hit the ground running on that. That would be second nature to what I have done. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, anyone else on the right? Anyone else? Aaron, thanks Great. for the tall arm. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Ripley, um, you. for your years of de dedication to our city and, and serving in many different capacities. So I just want to thank you on, on that accord and thank you for, for stepping up and your willingness to serve. My question for you, um, and I just want to just know your thoughts. Um, are you familiar with the Holloway versus Virginia Beach case? From what I read in the paper, yes, sir. And just, so I just want to know your thoughts on, on that case and the election system that we have now. Well, I, I feel the, um, I'm, I'm concerned about the way the, the um, districting was set up. I'm not a problem with having a lot of different districts, but I, I'm afraid well, we we have a we have a city council. I think now I think we have a really good city council has a good broad understanding of the whole city, and they look at things from their own district and also as the city as a whole. And I'm afraid things will get a little parochial if where everybody has their own little district and they all. I just I think over time it could evolve to not as broad thinking as it, as I'd like to see as a citizen, if you will. So. I think that it needs some adjustments. I think that the um, the I, I like I like the idea of uh, some of the at-large ideas of having somebody who is more than just in that district to be elected at at-large type on an at-large type basis. Uh, but I'm pretty I'm open I'm open to a lot of different I think there are a lot of different ideas to to take with this. Um, does that answer it? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, John. If I could, I'd like to follow up on that because I think ultimately in the past, the 11 people of this body have decided or decided not to let the people have the choice or choices as to what election system they want versus the ones that we might up here think we want or what we think people want. So would it be fair to say that whatever choice or choices that the choice of how we are elected and how we are structured is ultimately the choice of the voters in a referendum to decide and not the 11 people who sit here probably in a big decision like that a referendum might make might, might make some sense um i'm not crazy about referendums i think that you know you're elected to serve to make decisions big decisions bold decisions and i think that that's important but sometimes referendums are appropriate. Yeah, the charter that we have was approved by the voters for the General Assembly, so I think, I hope that answer is yes, yeah. because we're changing the basic structure. And do you think that that would 
take some time of discussion before such a referendum was held and engaging with the public as to the choices that are available to us? I don't take a lot of time to make decisions, but it may take a lot other people. I don't know. I could, I could make decisions quick. I'm just asking if we pose a referendum, the process to getting to the question to ask and the choices to be made, do you think that would take some time to get the public consensus that we're posing the right question with the right choices? That's always the issue in a referendum. What is the question? That's always the issue, uh, how it's worded. I would like to think good people could figure that out and get to a, the right question and get it on the ballot. Oh, I agree so too. Quickly. When you say quickly, do you mean 30 days, seven days? No. I, mean, I, I mean, I don't know. I haven't really thought about it, but I guess it could make this, but this election coming up if you had to. I mean, I don't know how quick you can do that here. Thank you very much. Okay, anyone else? Okay, I see no hands. Thank you very much, Ron. Thank you. Charlotte Zito, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, council members, for selecting me as a finalist for the Bayside District City Council seat. I feel honored to have been chosen, and I feel confident that I will be a caring, thoughtful, empathetic, and principled council member. I am well prepared. I have the strong support of my family, my school, and my community, and I am ready to devote myself to full and meaningful service on the city council. Like the late Lewis Jones, I hope to be Ms. Bayside, representing my neighbors and the residents of my district by listening to their concerns and finding creative solutions. I want to serve on the city council because I love Virginia Beach. Our city has the lowest taxes and the best public schools in Hampton Roads. The quality of life here is unparalleled and I only want to make it better. I first moved to Virginia Beach in 1987 and I lived with my parents and sisters in Birchwood Gardens, Cape Story by the Sea, and at the North End. After I earned undergraduate degrees in English literature and art history from the University of Virginia, don't hold it against me, Mr. Rouse, I returned to Hampton Roads to teach and earn my master's degree from Old Dominion University in English literature. I love my work, and I get excited to wake up each morning to greet my students and watch them learn and grow. One of the greatest pleasures of my professional life has been to see students that I taught 10, 15 years ago return to the area as leaders in the Virginia Beach community. My husband and I have been married for 15 years and we have two children, Isaac, who's 14 and he's entering the ninth grade and Louisa, who is eight, entering the third grade. We bought our first home in the Ocean View section of Norfolk and moved to our current home in Cypress Point in the fall of 2017. I believe that all children deserve the best possible education, and I will work tirelessly to see that happen in Virginia Beach. I currently serve as the chair of the Community Advisory Board at WHRO, an organization owned by the 21 school divisions throughout Hampton Roads, because I feel a strong commitment to equal access to great educational content and resources. My passion is education, and one of my highest priorities will be to promote the causes of education within the council. I'm a lover of the arts and an artist myself. I want to thank Councilman Branch for helping to bring the Sandler Center to Virginia Beach. It's my family's favorite concert venue. We subscribe to the Virginia Symphony's PB&J concerts every year. As a councilwoman, I will look for ways to promote the arts in our community, beautify spaces with public art, and make artistic performances accessible to all. I'm a runner, a proud member of the Tidewater Striders who enjoys the natural beauty of our city. I want to defend and protect the beauty of our Virginia Beach environment, and I admire the work that Councilman Tower has done to reduce our city's reliance on plastic bags. As I run, I have the chance to observe the beautiful neighborhoods and communities that make up the Bayside District but I also see some of the problems that my neighbors face. I notice roads around public schools that lack sidewalks. 
like Aragona Boulevard. I notice empty shopping centers like Cypress Point. My top priority projects for the Bayside District would be creating and maintaining safe tree-lined sidewalks on the busiest streets around our public schools and finding creative solutions to utilize commercial properties that lack anchor tenants. I look at what Councilman Rouse has been able to accomplish in SeaTac with the construction of a wonderful new basketball court and playground, and I imagine what could benefit my neighbors in LNJ Gardens and Wesleyan Pines and Cypress Point North. I've also admired the creative thinking and legwork that Vice Mayor Wilson and Councilman Rouse have used in their negotiations with Sanyo and other European businesses. I would love to find opportunities for infill development in the Bayside District to reinvigorate aging strip malls and empty shopping centers. While I'm a newcomer to local governance, I have a long family history of civic engagement and service that inspires me to serve, dating back to when my great-grandfather, Harold Hudgens, worked as the personnel manager and secretary of the Civil Service Commission for the city of Norfolk in 1952. My dad moved with his family to Virginia Beach in 1964. Virginia Beach was much more rural then. It looked like the Virginia Beach that Councilwoman Henley describes in her book, Glimpses of Down County History. Great Neck Road was a two-lane road surrounded by soybean fields and woods that led to the Lynn Haven River. My dad is a minister and a school guidance counselor who has always said that he wants students to be able to call him night and day, and I feel inspired by his example. Throughout my life, my father's example of selfless service to others inspired me to want to be a person on call to help others in need. I will be a council member who gives her time to others. We need public servants and community leaders in the best of times and in times of crisis. Right now, we are facing difficult economic times and there is major political division. Our city needs leaders who can help our citizens weather the economic storm and who can bridge the divides. I have an open mind. I want to speak with my fellow council members at length and listen to their proposals. The most important issues to me as a city leader will be education, public safety, and flood mitigation. I fully intend to steward the projects that will be funded by the recent flood mitigation referendum with particular attention to those projects that will benefit the Bayside District. As Councilman Moss has championed for so many years, I also believe in preserving the affordability, peace, and safety of Virginia Beach neighborhoods. I do not presume to know what the city council needs. What I do know is that a variety of age and professional experience is a benefit to any organization, and what I bring to our city council would be something new. I'm a working mother of school-aged children. I work full-time, and in my free time, I commit myself to public service endeavors. I will bring a youthful perspective to the council. As a high school educator, I am in touch with the perspectives of our youngest citizens. Many of my friends and neighbors are working parents like me who have young and school-aged children. They have told me that they want safe and peaceful neighborhoods, thriving shops and businesses, excellent education for their children, and protection from the threats of floods and hurricanes. I also want to welcome veterans, their spouses and families, many of whom settle in the Bayside District. I will feel proud to serve on this council alongside veterans Mayor Dyer and Councilman Holcomb. I have two sisters. One served as an officer in the Coast Guard and the other is married to a Navy officer and has moved all across the country with their family. Both of my sisters, along with their families, have now settled in the Bayside District. I have witnessed firsthand the challenges that veterans face as they transition to civilian life and the challenges military spouses face as they seek jobs and community engagement in their new homes. In my role on the council, I will strive to make life easier for our veterans and military families as they become part of our great city. I've also been inspired by the way that the city council and Mayor Dyer responded to the tragedy on May 31st, 2019. You provided your comforting presence to our Virginia Beach community in a time of crisis. And you continue to shepherd the process that our committee has followed as we plan the memorial for the lives lost. My work on the May 31st committee has inspired me to want to serve as committee liaisons Berlucci and Wooten have. Watching them lead has inspired me to want to serve. 
I believe that I have a responsibility to build a better future for my children and my community, and that I have the skills to be an excellent city councilwoman. I bring the approach of a scholar and a teacher to learning about the issues that my community faces. I have a deep desire to learn and a work ethic to match. When it comes time to vote on issues, no one will be more informed. I'm a voracious reader. I've been teaching students how to read critically, research, and listen deeply for almost 20 years. I am devoted to promoting diversity and equity in our city. Mayor Dyer has said that an essential quality he's looking for in the person who will fill the late Mr. Lewis Jones's seat is collegiality. I know that my leadership style is a collaborative one and that my empathy for others enables others to feel heard and valued. In the city council meeting after the passing of Lewis Jones, Vice Mayor Wilson reflected on his role as a mentor to new members of the council. She talked about how he mentored her when she first became a councilwoman. I believe that it would be an honor to his memory to serve. I am a tabula rasa, a blank slate, offering my services and my open mind to learn from you, to be mentored by you, and to listen to each of your perspectives. Thank you. Thank you again for this opportunity. Okay, thank you. Questions? Mr. Moss. Well, I have a number of questions to ask. Sure. Because uh, I couldn't deduce from your remarks that you had answered any of them. Um, and, that, and you didn't need to either. In all fairness, you, it's your 10 minutes. Now I'm just going to try to get questions that I hear from the residents of Bayside that they wanted me to ask. Absolutely. One of them is, do you support developing Rudy Loop as a park free of commercial development? Well, I believe that any plan for the Rudy Loop development should provide well-planned park space uh, with protected access for surfers like my dad and my son, uh, for people who fish, public restrooms, green space, ample parking. I don't know if commercial development can help the taxpayers of Virginia Beach realize a return on that investment, but I feel devoted to it maintaining a significant green space um, and my vote will be determined by the quality of the plan presented to the council. Um, I want to listen to my fellow council members. Okay, I'm recording that as a no. <laughs> so, you know, I think it's a binary choice. I just want to make sure, that, you know, I, it was a question of free of commercial development. And it's your answer infers that you have, you're opening the option for commercial development of Rudy Loop. Is that incorrect? I believe primarily it should serve as a park. Okay. And the other question, which is what I ask routinely and I got for other people, is but would you uh, vote to extend or support extending light rail into Virginia Beach without a referendum that supplants the one that took place? Uh, no, I believe it would be best at this time to have the voters ultimately decide, especially as we had an earlier referendum uh, back in 2016. So I think that that would make sense. Now, this is a big issue on the Shore Drive corridor. And uh, much as that historic home was a big issue in the Cypress Point community, as you may recall, I do. About rezoning, not just the A24, which the communities have supported. I mean, Mr. Jones didn't support the A36 rezoning on Pleasure House Road. But what is your perspective on rezoning in the Shore Drive corridor to A36 and replicating on the west side the development that we see on the east side of the Lester Bridge? I have significant concerns about it. Um, I grew up, um, for part of my childhood, I lived in the Chicks Beach area, and I have concerns that too much housing density will place huge burdens on the infrastructure and roadways of the Chicks Beach area. Um, I would feel like I need to look at any plans before I can move forward with my vote, but I have significant concerns about housing density in that area. Now, we are going to be facing, and I, I can't recall, but if you could just refresh me what educational institution you were employed by. Um, I've worked for Norfolk Academy um, for the past 18 years. Thank you. I just, I could not remember. I, I knew it was mm -hmm. an academy, but I couldn't remember which one it was. Thank you so much. Sure. We will be looking at some significant under-execution in the school board. They tr re traditionally have under-executed their money. Uh, if you were looking at someone who said we have shortfalls in hiring teachers and compensation, would you think that spending three and a half million dollars on AstroTurf for high school high schools was an appropriate choice in light of staffing shortages and compensation shortfalls? I think our first priority is, is recruiting and retaining the best possible teachers and giving them every possible opportunity to succeed. So um, I don't know specifically about that particular choice, the AstroTurf versus the 
um, compensation, but to my mind, teachers come first. And I think um, prioritizing their compensation, recruiting high quality teachers and retaining them uh, with small classes and um, with every every possible benefit that we can afford them, I think is, should be our first priority. Uh, I'm sure you have some ideas on this too, is what do you see, because you can always have endless lists, so I always like the constrain list. You're, as you see, as we look at the, because you'll be dealing with this issue, the ending fund balance of this, the taxpayer's money, what do you see as the top two priorities that would be competing for that capital surplus at the end of the, the surplus. year? The surplus. And that's not including flood mitigation, well, right? That's all paid for. This Absolutely. Is this is the surplus. True surplus. Well, and the two things that I've observed that are really important to me are um, the public safety of neighborhoods and children moving to and from schools. And then I feel uh, invested in, in trying to get the ball rolling. I know four months is not a long time, but at least just trying to get the ball rolling on some of that infill development and some of those empty shopping centers. They're, you know, they're a blight on the communities, um, and, and we need to think creatively about solutions that at Cypress Point Shopping Center, for example, there are others um, in the Bayside District, has remained empty for years. Um, and it's just, it's a blight on the neighborhood. And, and I, like I said, I really admired um, what uh, Councilman Rouse did with building the, and of course, I'm, I'm speaking to you from the perspective of a wife and mom of basketball players. They'd love to see a basketball court happen. I would like to talk to the neighbors and find out what they want in those spaces and try to get the city to rally behind changing, updating those spaces. As you notice, families are under and you have tremendous financial stress. Yeah. So would you, and obviously the Commonwealth has done their part by doubling the standard deduction, removing the sales tax on food as of January. So would you be in favor of returning a substantial, maybe as much as 50% of our surplus in some kind of tax relief back to families? I, I fully support returning money to families, especially with the increasing costs of inflation impacting, burdening people's lifestyles, burdening, burden with the cost of gas. Um, I, I definitely support that. And my last two, two questions deal with one you've heard me ask all the applicants is, would you support, because this would be a part of our legislative package subject to a subsequent referendum to modify our city charter to allow the public by special election rather than the council to fill vacancies that occur in between elections. I do. I support council members Moss, Rouse, and Tower in their desire to amend the process by which the Virginia Beach City Council fills vacancies. And, and the last one is not just for Virginia Beach because it's a state statute, but to amend the state statute that would give localities the option, the key word is the option, to repeal the 1.5 cent local sales tax on food. I do. Um, I would like to see our council use every available tool at our disposal to make life more affordable for the citizens of Virginia Beach. Well, first of all, I wanna thank you for being an applicant. And I'd like to say, cause I remember serving with uh, Jessica Abbott, who was a dear friend. She came to this body at the age of 26 with a very, in by traditional standards, inexperienced resume and served with great distinction. So I don't think anyone who's out there in the public should say that it takes great experience, it just takes good values, good judgment, and caring, and you certainly demonstrated that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councilman Moss. Thank you, anyone else? Aaron. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, uh, Ms. Zito. Uh, first, I wanna say thank you for being an educator, especially um, in, in these times, um, uh, I find that you're that you, I would be uh, very comfortable in your classroom. Um, you seem to be um, really, really engaging, and, and I really appreciate that. Um, well, one of the things you, you mentioned was that you value diversity and inclusion, and so um, Bayside it encompasses the area of Lake Edwards um, as well as Burton Station. And I know I specifically, and I know Councilmember Wooten has specifically worked with um, our third precinct to help um, that area specifically deal with all sorts of issues. How would you uh, particularly engage in, in that, that community? Thank you for asking. Um, and I will say too, um, you know, what first got me interested in public service and, and serving with the Virginia Beach Boards and Commissions um, was the fact that I'm a runner and I run through LNJ Gardens several times a week and I love that that lake in LNJ. 
Um, and I read that the Virginia Beach Historic Preservation Board was interested in um, preserving LNJ Gardens. And I got the opportunity to learn from Ms. Sharon Felton some of the history behind LNJ Gardens and some of the other historically black neighborhoods of Virginia Beach. And I just, I felt compelled to want to try to contribute to that. And I know LNJ Gardens very well. So um, I actually contacted um, Councilman Berlucci to ask you know, what opportunities are there? I'd love to get involved in this initiative. Um, and at the time, there were no openings on that board. Um, what I, I absolutely feel committed to, um, to improving the lives of folks in Burton Station. Um, one of the reasons that my husband and I settled in our neighborhood is that we wanted to see diversity in our neighborhood. We wanted to raise our children in a diverse community. Um, and so I, I feel very committed to um, fostering relationships between uh, the police force and the neighborhoods. Um, I've loved to see some of the programs that have been going on. I read about one in SeaTac that involved police officers doing um, uh, self-defense training with some of the students and children, teenage children. And I just think all of that is wonderful. Um, you know, I feel an affinity as a teacher. I feel an affinity with um, firefighters and police officers because we do essential work. Um, we have to show up. We have to be there. Um, you know, and, and I think... Um, I want to see um, our police officers be fostered and supported. Um, I also want to see those communities grow and thrive and, and ha see good relationships. I think I'm a bridge builder. I think I'm someone who can talk well um, with different constituents, and I hope to build those bridges. Thank you. Um, my, my last question for you and is that, and I just want to know your thoughts. There's no right or wrong answer. Have you been following the, the Holloway versus Virginia Beach case? And I'd just like to know your thoughts. Sure, I have. Um, I think it's really vital uh, that the city's minority communities have a full-throated voice in the process of government. Um, I certainly understand. Um, I've heard some, from some of the school board members some tr uh, some concerns and challenges with the new districts that were drawn um, because they don't reflect some of the communities or they cut through some of the communities, and I understand that, and I understand a need for change. But I also think whatever system the council designs should be sure to express the, the will and the voice of minority citizens of Virginia Beach. Thank you. Okay, anyone else on the right? Anyone else on the left here? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mayor Dyer. I'd like to thank all three candidates for stepping to the plate. Obviously, we have been blessed with some very, very good talent. Uh, but, and once again, you know, just makes a, you know, a tough decision even tougher. Uh, the next uh, rule of order will be a public hearing, and then there will uh, be, be a decision. But I'd like to thank the participants and thank the people in the audience for coming, too. And, you know, this was the first order of business in this hall. And I'll tell you what, it was important, and thank you for being here. We are adjourned.